One of the best things to come out of 2020 for me has been the development of some great friendships with industry colleagues. And one of those friends I interviewed on my Tea Time chat last week. She's Joanne Henry, my colleague from Conference Direct. Joanne and I have a lot in common. We both try and love on our clients as much as possible through content, through events, and through resources. And we're also trying to keep our family sane during this crazy time. So I wanted to sit with Joanne, wanted to talk about some of the things that she's working on, not only for Conference Direct, but some of her projects as well. So here's our Tea Time chat recorded just last week. I hope you enjoy my time with Joanne. Absolutely. Um, I'm excited because um, I've been um, using this time to create and get creative and kind of um, kind of figure out some stuff. And um, I've got like lots of different ideas brewing. And it was actually during this creative time that a light bulb went off. Uh, and I kind of figured out kind of what I want to do next or in tandem with Conference Direct. And it was really during this creative time um that i uh, that i you know figured it out and um i i think that's one thing we don't necessarily give ourselves the time to just sit down clear your mind and you know put pen to paper and get creative with your thoughts and i think people you know by nature have lots of ideas um you know you know, when you're running around doing whatever, or when you're working, you, you know, you might go off on, you know, a tangent. But I think if you actually give yourself that time to create and clear everything else off the decks, I think it's really powerful. You and I never had the time to do this. We were, uh, we both have busy uh, businesses. And then of course, when the pandemic hit, um, it was busy canceling all of our business, yes. <laughs> um, but our businesses have now slowed almost to a standstill. And so we do find ourselves with these creative pockets of time. Um, and it's been such an incredible blessing. And that'll be the one thing that I take away from this crazy year called 2020 is I've had the time to really get back to almost who I was as a kid. Like I was so creative as a kid mm -hmm. and then adulthood hit and those creative opportunities just didn't present themselves the way they, they, that they did when I was a younger person. Uh, absolutely. And you do, you do find yourself like, you know, you get caught up in your job, your, you know, your work, your family, all your other commitments. And I don't think we give ourselves time to, you know, sit with our ideas and actually, you know, again, I mentioned it kind of put pen to paper and spend some time, you know, thinking those thoughts, creative thoughts out. And um, I think you, you, you definitely need time to do that. We give, you know, hopefully give time to exercise and do all sorts of different things, but I don't think we necessarily give our time for, for that, the sort of our creative uh, side of our, our brain, if you will. Um, I recall what, just kind of when we started this, I had heard or read somewhere, I think it was on a podcast, uh, again, podcasting, I have, I'm listening to such great podcasts right now. Um, and, um, but I, there was a, a group of authors, um, people that were writing a book, but just could never find time to actually sit down and write the book. They actually have um, a group, a Zoom call, where they actually spend a few hours working on their book. So they know that at least once a week, they're going to work on writing their book for a couple hours. Yeah. And uh, actually, and one of our industry colleagues is in one of those groups. I don't know if you know Jennifer Spear from um, Unscripted. Um, I, anyways, no, I don't. So maybe you, that's actually, one of those I picked it up from you and not a podcast. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe. But, but I, you know, I think those groups do exist and now mm -hmm. we know why. And I, and I'll be honest, it was Jennifer's uh, group that um, compelled me to reach out to you about our little Tuesday. Okay. Um, morning ritual. And Joanne, here's something that you and I have to be, be we, we need to cherish this time, even when our businesses get busy again. Because I think if we just go back to how life was before, 
we're going to lose this hour together and we're going to lose that opportunity to be creative and explore that side. And I think if we still maintain this hour together, it will feed us well. It'll serve us well, sorry, in our businesses, because I feel so energized. And when you have one idea, then you have another and another and another. And it just all of a sudden, like, I think our businesses will benefit if we maintain the integrity of our little agreed. Together. Yeah, you can't, you, after having gone through COVID and this time, you can't go back to the regular way. Mm -hmm. you, you, you've, everyone has learned something from this time. Yeah. And I think, um, you, you know, you can't not be changed for mm -hmm. having gone through this in some shape, way or form. I was working in, it's called the Pomodoro technique. So it's like <laughs> 20, 20, 20 some odd minute intervals. Um, yeah. And then you break. And I was finding myself very productive. Um, and that time went by really quickly. And, you know, my iPhone was off, my, you know, I off um, notifications. Because, you know, I tend to sometimes be a bit like a squirrel. So a light goes off and I'm, you know, <laughs> like all over we the place. Yeah. So trying to get better, um, uh, better with that and focused. So I've heard about the Pomodoro technique, John Maxwell. If any of you read John Maxwell, he swears by it. Um, I only tried it once in my professional career. It was a few years back. I found the 20 minutes was too short. What mm -hmm. did, what do you do at the end of the 20 minutes and you feel you're still going, do you still, I still going? go, but then I take a break after, um, after, I think it's after three or four Pomodoros, um, okay. you take a break. So okay. and whether, and that could be just, you know, making yourself a tea um, or, you know, going outside to get some fresh air or, or, you know, what have you just do something, you know, toss in a, a load of laundry. Um, but, um, but you are during that time focused, but then you do absolutely have to take a break. It's funny when you were talking about um, Pride and Prejudice because You've Got Mail, there's a line in You've Got Mail um, where she she talks about like, I loved her life in New York, like just the, the fall, the, the, the bookstore. And she's like, I just want a little life or a small life. Yeah. And I, there's something about that that really resonated with me. And it's still, I yes, it still stays with me. So, cause the book she's reading in You've Got Mail with the rose in it is mm -hmm. Pride and Prejudice. That's right. <laughs> and that's, that's one of the fights that they have is, is because Tom Hanks character doesn't understand why she's Fox hooked on this book, Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, do they get together in the end? Oh, that's interesting. This is so full. Yeah, circle. I think I might watch it this weekend just to uh, catch up with Meg and Tom. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. I think any parent who has children in sports and going through COVID, there's the parents. I think there's three classes of parents just making this up, but there's three <laughs> classes. There's the, there's the class like you who is genuinely interested in the progress of your child. And now you've been denied that opportunity by COVID. Mm -hmm. Then there's the parent who yells at their kid. This maybe not in tennis or maybe in tennis. I don't oh, know. Oh yeah. I don't know. And yeah. Yeah. And so that parent, he's, he's losing his mind because he can't be in the arena banging on the glass and yelling at his kid. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't feel sorry for those parents. And then there's the parent like me who can really do without the sport drama. And so I'm loving COVID because I don't have yeah. to deal with, with any of the drama. If I don't sure. want to go, I don't have to go. My husband will take the kid and drop him off at the propane tank and away. Yeah. I go. There you go. <laughs> And so, yeah, for, I think COVID is affecting sporting parents in some way, shape or form. Like the kids, again, knock on wood, unless they cancel the season, the kids are still playing. Like, Which is the most important. Playing tennis. Exactly. Yeah. That's the most important. But there's parents who are losing their minds right now, whether it's you because you can't see your kid and support him or the hockey dad that can't yell at his kid. Yeah. <laughs> Both of you are in trouble. Yeah. <laughs>
One of the event, one of the programs that I started with my colleague, Carolyn Poole, I'm not sure if uh, many of you out there know Carolyn, uh, but two years ago, we launched what we call a Sanka set, uh, five to seven cocktails uh, networking. And we partnered with a downtown Toronto hotel. So we partnered, you know, with the Ritz Carlton was hosted us first. You know, we did with Intercontinental, Four Seasons, uh, Shangri-La, you, you name it. Um, every hotel we pretty much partnered with. And um, we would get together with um, a number of, of I want to say event professionals, but it, it, it actually went beyond just event professionals. Maybe event professionals, their end client or someone really interesting that they knew or maybe someone in their company um, or just centers of influence. And, and I just backstep, it was for women. So it was a networking event for women. And, um, and a hotel would host us, as I mentioned. Um, and so it was their sales team. You know, it was a great opportunity for the hotel to put their best foot forward. It wasn't necessarily about the food and the cocktails. It was really about coming together and networking. But all the hotels that we partner with are just so amazing. And they all wanted to um, just do a great job for, for Carolyn and myself and, and our, our, our guests. And it was a really great time like people looked forward to it there was one time when we we actually just took a hiatus because it was the it's kind of summer and we know people go away we got people emailing us asking us if they were still on the guest list <laughs> and it's like absolutely we've just taken a hiatus um so you know there was some women that would come the same like we'd see them almost religiously every month and then others that would kind of come in and go when you know, based on their own personal and professional calendar. Uh, but it was a really nice group of women. And there was a lot of terrific conversations and connections that were made beyond just sort of our event world, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when COVID hit, um, obviously, we couldn't meet in person. Um, so we kind of discussed, you know, what can we do? Like, should we take this virtual? And we were we contemplated it because the you know that virtual cocktail reception was 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 being done quite a bit but but we thought you know what we have something really special here and now that it's virtual our guests don't have to be from the downtown toronto area our hotels that host us yeah. don't have to be from downtown toronto um, so, you know, our guest list, so we reached out to many of our global sales partners um, with Conference Direct and, um, and the response has been very positive and a number of them have hosted us. Um, we still, you know, have in obviously most of our clients uh, and uh, guests are from the greater Toronto area, but not everybody. We've actually extended invitations to some folks in the States and others across Canada. And, um, and it's interesting because the hotel partners, they're, they love the idea, but they didn't quite get the, the concept, like virtually. And they've all walked away going, oh my gosh, that was like the nicest, like the, the best two hours that they've spent. Um, and we've had, you know, some topics. Um, like last week we did our November Sanka set and we did it, uh, we called it a night of luxury. And we had the founder, Christine Carlton of the September, which is Canada's first luxury online shoe boutique. It's now a lifestyle uh, online high-end lifestyle boutique. Um, oh. Phenomenal woman. This, so it's the September. And um, to complement that, we had our partners from Four Seasons Hotels in Rosewood. Um, and we just kind of made a, a kind of a fun theme of, of luxury. Um, last month in October, we did wellness, mental wellness and well-being. And we had the Hyatt host us uh, and talked about their relationship uh, with Headspace, which is an app oh, for wow. mental wellness and, um, and, and um, words just escaping me. Um, um, but, um, mental wellness and well-being and medita meditation meditation yeah, meditation. yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had linda hilton um who you know uh who is a hilton uh so she's our hilton rep our global sales rep and she's just a character and a half and to have you know a member of the hilton literally a member of the hilton family um you know share some some secret tidbits about her family uh was kind of fun um and um, so we've 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 had some fun with it so we're, we're pleased that we've carried it through we're going to take a hiatus for december because that's such a busy time but we'll be back in in the new year I miss travel. <laughs>
I, I miss travel. I miss like many of you out there who are event professionals. I don't care if it's lining up in customs or, you know, checking in at Air Canada or checking in at a hotel. I miss the process, the people, the process. And so I was talking to Michael Welsh, many of you know from a core, and I said, you know, Michael, I just want to bring the hotels to people. Like, let's just have some fun with it. Little edutainment, some education, but really entertainment. Let's not overthink it. Uh, and let's, you know, kind of do a conference direct um, journey across Canada showcasing your beautiful hotels. Um, so we just did the first one, um, which I, Leanne, you were a part of, uh, which we started on your side of the country and the left coast um, in, with Victoria. And um, we, mm -hmm. we had the, the concierge from the, uh, the Empress, uh, the tea concierge from the Empress talk about tea. And you talk about the, like how interesting for an hour we talked about tea. Like who knew? <laughs> and everyone was engaged. Right. It wasn't just me because I no, like exactly. <laughs> everyone was engaged. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. So much fun. I feel pretty confident that, um, you know, with the great news of the vaccines coming out, Moderno just said that their vaccine is like 94, 95 percent effective. Um, the the um, the Pfizer, um, I, I think by I personally think this time next year we will be traveling again um and we will be doing meetings um you know maybe not you know the huge <laughs> conventions um but definitely um we'll be getting back to normal um uh, once the vaccine is widely available um and that they say that like by next summer it should be widely available um and i think uh people will want to get back to um some sense of normalcy. I think there's that, I think that that whole idea of revenge spending, revenge travel, revenge meetings, what have you, I think that's, that's going to be a real thing. And, um, I, you know, maybe someone might not jump on a cruise ship tomorrow or, you know, want to go, go to the, you know, the other side of the world. Uh, but I definitely think that um, people will want to travel. Okay, Joanne, pardon my ignorance. I've never heard that term before, revenge travel. What is revenge Revenge travel? spending. So, um, so, what, so this is really interesting. So back in, I want to say spring, when China was coming out of the first, their first wave of, of COVID, um, and, and, you know, stores were starting to reopen, Hermes and Louis Vuitton in Shanghai and, and some of the big Chinese um, cities, um had their biggest biggest days like like oh. like a few like millions of dollars worth of sales and like people just wanted they were pent up and wanted to spend um wow. you know i i think north america we've been been hard hit but i think um i think people will want to um go out and spend money and I think travel is, is one of those things. What that, yeah. what that looks like, not sure yet, um, but I know, um, you know, I'll be the first, and I'll be the first person at the airport once I have a vaccine.